Everybody, because they're fanatics, we have another fanatic list. This was a huge hit for King's Dominion. A lot of you guys liked it, so we're going to continue on. We have my home park. This park is a, about a 30-minute drive from my house. It is a very fun amusement park. It's okay. It's got its ups and downs. But fanatic list is where I basically give my uh, list of coasters that are at this park that I feel like mentioning and just basically give overall uh, just a list of are they good rides, are they bad rides, what are my recommendations, basically so that you are prepared for what to expect when you go to the park and ride these roller coasters. Alright, let's start with the worst one of the park, uh, in my opinion, because it's a Vekoma SLC. They suck. Um, it's worth riding if you're one of those people that are willing to give up your body for a, just a painful ride. Uh, be my guest. Go ahead. It's not a very fun ride. It's one of the worst of the mind erasers out there. It's just brutalizing now they do have soft pads so it it kind of helps um, not really but if you um if you lean into the ride if you have your head forward even though it says don't do it do do that because that that will make sure when your head gets forced into the restraints your back ha back part of your head will be hitting the pad so it'll be hitting like you're hitting a soft cloud sort of not really um lines can get pretty long the gp loves this ride i know gp are crazy they love mind erasers um so just if you really want to do it do it either late in the day when you're willing to brutalize yourself or do it as soon as possible before the lines get long and I know I usually don't do wild mouse coasters, but this is one worth mentioning because this is a fun ride. Raging Cajun is a really cool spinning roller coaster. Even though it's another hand-me-down from Great America, it's a war it, it's a huge hit. It's a very fun ride, and it's really intense. Those switchbacks really force you into spinning really fast. It can get really intense, almost too intense for a small little uh, wild mouse, but it's, it's very fun. I really like these spinning coasters. Oh, and by the way, just a heads up, long lines. These, um, this, since this is a huge hit, a lot of people like riding it, so the lines can get pretty long uh, for this roller coaster. Moving on, we have the only B&M roller coaster at the park, just like King's Dominion. We have Apocalypse The Last Stand. This was the first ever B&M coaster ever to be made, because this was a hand-me-down from Six Flags Great America. It used to be called Iron Wolf. Um, it's, an, it's an okay ride. Enjoyable. I mean, if you're in the stand-up coasters, you'll like it. It's not as good as some of the other roller coasters, because it is the first one, so it, 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 it can get pretty rough. It's got a lot of uh, roughness into it. Operations here are really really slow. I mean, I these are probably the worst operations out of all the roller coasters at the park because they just it takes forever. You're you would it would be quicker to start to go to Superman and wait in Superman's long line and ride Superman, get back to Apocalypse and they've only dispatched one train. It literally takes them forever. It would be quicker just to go ride something else. Like if you're willing to wait, go ahead, but it takes them at least 5 to 10 minutes just to dispatch one train. They are slow at dispatching this train uh, but there are some days where they're quick but most of the time it is very slow now the theming on this ride is on point the theming is really good it's one of Six Flags better themed roller coasters it's got some nice theming you got airplanes crashing into geysers there's all this graffiti talking about how it's the end of the world it really makes you feel like it is the apocalypse Moving on to Roar, we have the two, so I'm, I put the two Woodies together just to kind of have that um, theme because uh, both Woodies are not perfect, but they're really good. This one is, in my opinion, not as good as the others. Um, it can get pretty rough just because it has the PTC trains and not the Millennium Flyer change, trains. Hopefully, that will change because of the Discovery Kingdom's Roar being turned into an RMC. Hopefully, that the Millennium Flyer trains will come to this and then they can get rid of the stupid old PTC trains. I, I mean, I'm not hating on PTC. It's just, they're just not good for... For GCI style roller coasters, uh, line, this coaster is almost deserted every time I go because n I, I just don't see lines there at all. But it's also due to the capacity. Uh, the the capacity is huge since they use the PTC train. So uh, so lines are really easy, so you can go whenever you want. Moving on to the Wild One. This is the oldest roller coaster I've ridden. Just to uh, throw that out there. Um, even though it opened in 1986 at this park, it opened in 1917 at Massachusetts before it coming to here in 1986. This airtime is nuts. You're getting thrown out of your seat. It's ejector airtime. Although it can almost be painful due to the lap bars. 
and that's what and uh, but it, it's a very intense roller coaster with all its airtime especially at that helix at the end we're getting thrown into your seat it's hard to try to go against the forces because it is just forcing you down in your seat and you're getting thrown to the left side of the trains when it's going around the double helix Alrighty, let's go on to Joker's Jinx. Now, Joker's Jinx is a fan personal favorite of mine because it is really intense. This is what I think is more intense than the Flight of Fear roller coasters. Even though the Flight of Fear coasters are indoors, this one is just more intense. That it goes faster and it's smoother. These things are butter smooth. I don't feel any roughness like I do on the flight both Flight of Fears at Kings Island and Kings Dominion. Also, this one does not have a mid course brake run, so you don't lose all the that momentum you just keep going and you pick up speed operations here are pretty good even though it's a launch coaster it is pretty good it's better it's some of the better operations than the other uh, roller coasters at this park and the theming is all right because it has the Joker theme it has the Joker uh, laugh and it's got the Joker grin smile the face and it's also got the cool wacky mirror so the, the theming's all right Alrighty, we got bat. We we have another Vacoma roller coaster in the park. Is this a good or bad Vacoma? It's a good Vacoma. I would say it's a good Vacoma. Um, operations here are weird, but this is the most popular ride in the park. So they usually run two trains, and op uh, operations uh, go pretty quickly. Um, even though it is a flying coaster, it's not perfect. Uh, smoothness, it it really depends. Uh, smoothness is okay. Uh, there is a little bit of router because remember this is Vacoma. It's not perfect, uh, but it's still a good ride and it's one of the better Vacomas and it's really intense I it's this ride is just insane at intensity it can get to the point where y your stomach is getting compressed because it is it's pushing you down into the seat Alrighty, this is my personal favorite roller coaster in the park. This is Superman Ride of Steel. It's the be best ride in the park, in my opinion. It is extremely intense, even though it has those stupid straight sections and the helixes. They're actually pretty intense, and it makes up for the amount of airtime. It only has five hills, but the hills are outstanding. I really like the airtime in this ride. Operations here suck, though. They're always it's always one train. It's very rare that you'll see two trains on this ride, and because it's such a long ride, it takes forever for trains to come back at me because I mean it's quick for them to uh, dispatch trains but since it's a long ride you have you still have to wait a long time and this is in my opinion the best ride at night at night here um, it's I mean some of the others are pretty good but I just think this is a really good ride at night uh, but it is very rare that you get to ride this at night just because of the fact that this park closes so early sometimes before the sun even sets all the way that you're having a cool nighttime ride but there there are all those chances when you do get it and it is awesome so that is my fanatic list for six flags america thank you all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this i'll be doing more fanatic lists on parks that i have been to thank you all for watching and as always roller coaster fanatics keep coasting